Come on, Jamie. Stop acting naive. I know you added something to my drink. What are you talking about? I didn't do anything. Jamie, don't lie to me. I saw it. Why would I do that? You're being ridiculous. I don't know why you did it, but I never drank anything from that glass. Now I give you the chance to come clean. <laughs> You're just making things up. This is why my parents never liked you. You're not good enough for my brother anyway. What? What does that have to do with anything? <laughs> oh, come on. You know what I mean. You're not from the same social class as us. That's not fair, Jamie. Jack loves me for who I am, not for where I came from. Whatever. I don't care. Just go back to your boring life and leave us alone. So this is what it's about: my financial status, my background. Ah, you're just so pathetic. You're just trying to use my brother for his money, and you were trying to intoxicate me. You're such a freaking psycho. Oh yeah, sure, I'm a psycho. At least I'm not a pathetic gold digger. My name is Emily, and I'm in my late twenties. When I was in high school, I met a handsome, humorous guy named Jack. We immediately fell in love. Despite our backgrounds, my family was poor, while his family was wealthy. We found that we had so much in common. We shared such similar goals and interests. Jack was the only one I had ever been with. And he was the only person I could imagine spending my life with. As our love for each other grew stronger, Jack and I started making plans for our future. We went to the same college together, training to be the restaurant's managers. I had always been passionate about that line of work, while Jack had a different reason for going to culinary school. Jack's parents had a famous restaurant chain. And they wanted Jack to inherit it. Jack's sister, Jamie, was also in school to help her brother run the restaurants in the future, and so Jack's parents paid for all of his expensive tuition fees. Luckily, I was awarded a scholarship for my outstanding profile from high school. Because Jack came from a very wealthy background, he always made sure to be generous with his friends. He never tried to hide the fact that he could afford many things. Although I never dated him for the money, he was always making me laugh, and I loved that about him. As soon as we graduated college, we started planning for our wedding. I wanted to have it after I'd found a decent job, but Jack said his parents could pay for all of it. I wasn't comfortable with making Jack's parents pay because I had always expected that our wedding would be something we needed to take care of. However, Jack disagreed. He insisted that it was the perfect time for us to get married, and he wanted everything to be just as we had dreamed about. He assured me that his parents were happy to cover for us and that everything would be fine. I had a strange feeling about what he was saying, and Jack seemed to notice that. Then he brought me home to see his parents, so he could reassure me that his plan was absolutely flawless. When we arrived at Jack's parents' house, I was immediately struck by the beautiful landscaping and well-maintained exterior. It seemed like Jack's family was even more well off than I expected. Jack's parents greeted us with polite smiles, and they both seemed a bit quiet. His sister Jamie seemed quiet too. I felt really awkward, even a little unwelcome. Jack explained to me later that their personalities were simply timid like that. I trusted him and tried to ignore the weird feeling in my gut. As we were planning our wedding, Jack was determined to have the most extravagant wedding possible. He literally spared no expense. 
he frequently went with the most expensive options, from the venue to the decorations. At first, I was a bit excited about the idea, but as the cost began to add up, I started to feel really uneasy. I tried talking to Jack about my concerns, but he wouldn't listen. He was convinced that the wedding had to be perfect, no matter the cost. I didn't want to disappoint him, but I also didn't want to burden his parents with the financial strain of the wedding. And so, I found myself getting more and more anxious. I couldn't believe how much money we were spending, and I felt guilty for not contributing more. Despite my reservations, I tried to be grateful for everything my fiance was giving me. But of course, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. Fortunately, just when I was anxious to the point of being unbearable, the day of my bachelorette party arrived. I was excited and relieved to spend fun evening with my closest friends and temporarily let go of my worries. Of course, I invited Jack's sister Jamie in an effort to get more comfortable with his family. She also bought a few of her childhood friends, and I gladly welcomed them to our party. However, she was not who I expected her to be. Things really took a dark turn when Jamie and her friends arrived. She seemed agitated and moody, and I tried to talk to her to see if everything was okay. She brushed me off and started to drink heavily. Her friends were quite rude, to say the least. They didn't even seem to be aware of the fact that I was the bride. They were too loud and obnoxious, and I felt so uneasy. I had to ask them to stop yelling. It was such a chaotic night in the worst way. Later in the evening, I noticed something really weird. When I left for the bathroom and came back, I saw Jamie put something into my drink. We all had our own signature cups to drink from, so I knew it couldn't have been a mistake. I wished I was paranoid, though, but under the disco light, I could clearly see her taking out a tiny package and pouring it into my drink. Then she gave it to me and urged me to drink all of it. I quickly realized that she might be trying to give me a blackout. And ruin my bachelorette party. Of course, I only pretended to drink it, but held the liquid in my mouth. I waited for when she wasn't looking to spit it out. A few minutes later, I pretended to have a headache and intentionally asked Jamie to take me back to my hotel room. Her eyes instantly sparkled the moment she thought that I was going to have a blackout. She immediately bought me. To my room, when Jamie put me on my bed, she pulled out her phone and called someone. I didn't know who the person on the phone with her was, but what she was saying terrified me. Girls, could you get me a bouncer up here? Someone handsome, tall with some muscles. I need to take a few photos of him with this pathetic witch. <laughs> She's blackout drunk. Can you believe it? She doesn't know what I have planned for her at all. Oh well, so much for being a bride. Say goodbye to your marriage, sweetheart. Right when Jamie was being so arrogant that she had shown her true colors, I got up and spoke back to her using my fiercest voice. Say goodbye to my marriage. What are you talking about? Jamie was visibly shocked, but she was quick to respond and play the role of the naive sister-in-law again. Um, nothing. Oh, Emily, you must have drunk too much. You're talking nonsense. No, I am not. Talk to me, Jamie. What is this about? Emily, why do you sound so scary? What have I done to you? Come on, Jamie. Stop acting naive. I know you added something to my drink. What are you talking about? I didn't do anything. Jamie, don't lie to me. I saw it. 
Why would I do that? You're being ridiculous. I don't know why you did it, but I never drank anything from that glass. Now, I give you the chance to come clean. You're just making things up. That is why my parents never liked you. You're not good enough for my brother anyway. What? What does that have to do with anything? Oh, come on. You know what I mean. You're not from the same social class as us. That's not fair, Jamie. Jack loves me for who I am, not for where I came from. <laughs> Whatever. I don't care. Just go back to your boring life and leave us alone. So, this is what it's about? My financial status? My background? Ugh, you're so pathetic. You're just trying to use my brother for his money. And you were trying to intoxicate me. You're such a freaking psycho. Oh yeah? Sure, I'm a psycho. At least I'm not a pathetic gold digger. Jamie screamed and stormed out of the room. I was understandably in shock. I sat there alone for what felt like forever. I just could not believe what I was getting myself into. I had never imagined something so crazy and heartbreaking to happen to me. As soon as I could gather my thoughts, I immediately called Jack's parents. It was very intimidating, but I knew the time had come for me to be vocal about my feelings. I was really straightforward and asked them if Jack had talked to them about the finances of our wedding. To my absolute surprise, the situation with them was even worse than I had anticipated. Actually, we didn't make any payments. We never approved of our son's decision to marry you and we are not paying for his wedding. I'm sorry to say this, dear. You seem like a nice girl, but we didn't think your background is suitable for Jack. I said that you could marry each other, but don't expect our support, at least financially. Well, I don't like beating around the bush. Listen, Emily, stay away from our money, alright? Goodbye. They hung up on me immediately, as if I was truly some sort of a gold digger. My eyes were already filled with tears, but I knew there was one more person that I needed to confront. The man whom I thought would have been a perfect husband, Jack. As soon as he picked up, I could feel my voice shaking. Jack, we, we need to talk. I've just talked to your parents, and they said they're not paying for the wedding. What's going on? What? Why would you talk to them without me around? Why wouldn't I? I'm going to marry you, Jack. Tell me what's going on. Well, okay, I should have told you. I haven't been able to convince them. What do you mean? You told me they were paying for everything. I may have exaggerated a little. I just wanted to impress my friends with an extra vegan wedding. Jack, that's not okay. You lied to me. And now I look like a gold digger in front of everyone. How could you be so childish? I'm sorry, Emily. I didn't mean for it to go this far. I just wanted to show everyone that we can have a fancy wedding. You should have been honest with me from the beginning. Now I'm left with the mess that you have made. Well, we could um, take out a loan or something. No, Jack. This is not about the wedding anymore. And are you even aware of how much your sister hates me? I mean... I wouldn't say she hates you. Come on, don't be so dramatic. Jack, she tried to intoxicate me. Do you understand? Emily, stop making things up. If you keep talking like this, my family won't like you anymore. Oh, to hell with your family. We're done, Jack, you selfish bastard. I hung up the phone and blocked his number. I spent the whole night crying. 
devastated by what had just happened. Who would have thought my bachelorette party would turn into such a terrible nightmare? Luckily, I still had my girls with me, and they were all really supportive of my decision. They helped me cancel the wedding and give everyone else an announcement. I really wouldn't know what to do without them. A few months later, a common friend of Jack and I reached out to me, just to let me know that Jack desperately wanted to talk. I turned him down, of course. My heart ached, but I couldn't possibly trust him again after what had happened. Jack didn't protect me when I needed him the most. Plus, I had never want to deal with his horrible family again. With the help of my closest friends, I slowly got back on my feet. Eventually, I decided to take control of my life again. I applied for a job at a small local fine dining restaurant and was hired. I worked hard, learned everything I could about the business, and soon became a manager. It was a tough period of my life, but it taught me the value of hard work and perseverance. Meanwhile, Jack and Jamie continued to live extravagantly, spending all their parents' money on shopping sprees and luxurious vacations. They never learned their lesson or took responsibility for their actions. Shortly after, they took over their parents' business. It went bankrupt. One surprising incident happened shortly after. Jamie had to come to my restaurant to ask for a job. It was surprising to see her there, and she was clearly embarrassed by her situation. She even told me that Jack had to move to another city because he couldn't find a job here. But I couldn't forget how she had treated me and how she had enabled Jack's lies. I turned her down without hesitation. She left the restaurant quickly, her head hanging low. I felt a twinge of satisfaction in that moment, knowing that I finally came out on top. It was really about recognizing my own worth and standing up for myself. I learned that I didn't need anyone to support me financially or emotionally. I could stand on my own two feet and create my own success. Now. I have become the co-owner of the restaurant, working side by side with the most talented and kind-hearted chefs and managers in the city. I have moved on, and now I am creating a new life that I am so proud of, and that is all that matters now.